Yeah, Mr. Secretary, how are you? Um, <laughs> how are you? The uh, antibiotic market. Um, your wheelhouse as a person uh, very familiar with the challenges in the pharmaceutical industry. We have these very resistant organisms, and you want to have an antibiotic that covers them, but you're going to use it on very few people, and most of the people that you use it upon are either on Medicare or Medicaid. If you throw in VA, it's going to be probably at least two-thirds, maybe four-fifths public payers. Um, one idea has been to carve out these extraordinarily um, important but rarely used antibiotics from the DRG and to put them into Medicare Part B, but making sure you have the accountability associated with the stewardship program. Knowing that we may end up saving money if you have a shorter hospital stay, and of course lives if you have a more effective antibiotic. Any thoughts about that? And maybe you can't be official, but just because of your expertise? No, you, you, you actually put your finger ex on exactly the problem with antimicrobial resistance and the next generation antibiotics that we're developing. And it's something that I'm actually wrestling with with our team right now. We have essentially a market, a market failure, as you describe it so rightly. We want drug companies to invent an antibiotic that won't get used. Yes. Um, that is an economic problem. Um, so I am looking at different approaches. One of them could be... More properly will be used rarely, rarely and appropriately. Exactly, as opposed to broadly. One approach could be around our payment policies, as you mentioned, uh, direct pass-through payments. We, I, I will look at that. The other is it, is it is increasingly resembling our bioterrorism countermeasures programs, where the government basically be, is the only purchaser for value of certain products. It's yes. almost a stockpiling government purchase issue. I want to, I'm, I've actually commissioned work to look at this. We have tools to deal with market failures, and we need to look at how those tools could be used here for AMR. And I will say that there are, there's at least one antibiotic that the United States taxpayer invested hundreds of millions of dollars into development and was sold for like $16 million to a company from India because the business model didn't work. As you say, very expensive to develop but rarely used. Right. We have got to ensure that there's either a commercial marketplace that's viable to sustain these or a government market that will make them sustainable. Now, you just said something which, of course, my ear perks up, that you're actually working perhaps on a solution regarding this. Um, now, would this solution be in the offing? What stage is this work? Uh, so it is still foundational, so I'd love to hear your ideas and we could work together offline about that. Uh, I've got my teams working on this. I've identified with the re some of the recent, you can see in the Wall Street Journal, some of the recent challenges of manufacturers of these novel products and them even not surviving necessarily. Uh, and it's an economic problem. And we'll make an appointment tool. to bring in some ideas to you if you Absolutely. Mind. Thank you, thank you. Next, another issue I'm interested in, uh, the mentally ill. Um, currently they lose their Medicaid when they go into uh, a jail setting. And so even before they're adjudicated, they lose their Medicaid. Now, if they're on a, uh, mood stabilizer, for example, that works for them, but it's not on the jail formulary, they may get either not placed on something or placed on something inadequate, and then they decompensate and their behavior worsens, or when they're released, they are now kind of wandering on the streets as opposed to holding a job and paying taxes. I think the budget, uh, the administration's budget, allows them to continue coverage for six months while in jail, but I would ask, since the definition of a jail is that you stay there until you're adjudicated, basically, and that can be up to a year, why not extend it for an entire year, and if not for the entirety of the Medicaid uh, coverage of care, at least for the mental health issue, uh, I think that would go a long way to addressing the revolving door of the mentally ill going in and out of jail with disruption of care. Any thoughts on that? So it's an important question. We, uh, we were able to get in the budget this year this prohibition of states terminating Medicaid coverage for the first six months of incarceration and requiring that process to facilitate the enrollment on release so that we can avoid relapse and other health crises. So we got that far, um, but you raise an important issue about whether one should go further. I'm happy to work with you on that, share the issue around serious mental illness and incarceration and that transition that handoff both into incarceration as well as the handoff from incarceration out to community integration. 
Yeah, I, 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 well, there's at least some suggestive data out of Los Angeles that the mentally ill are cycling through jails. And so the degree that we stabilize that, I think, is the degree to which we begin to fundamentally address the issue of homelessness. I yield back and thank you. Uh, 